So today, I have three stories for you guys, and they all concern public shaming. Now, in all three stories, we're going to have a young life lost. And be warned that in one of the stories, there is a kid as young as 13. Okay, so if that sounds like something that'll fuck up your day, you know what, we're going to stop right here. We're going to let you out. Okay, now everybody else that's ready for this ride, okay, just make sure your seatbelt is tightly fastened because this is going to be a bumpy one. Your discretion is advised. And let's get on with it. Welcome to Monkey Tales. Intriguing true stories wherever we can find them. Told by me, the left-handed monkey. If your idea of a good time is a good true crime, then subscribe or you're going to regret it. Now, before I can begin the first story, I do want to preface that it is illegal to gamble in China. And it has been since 1949 when the uh, Communist Party took over. Now, you might want to ask, Monkey, isn't Macau in China? And isn't it like second only behind Vegas in gambling? I would say yes, but come on, guys. It's obviously a special administrative region. OK, so stop asking stupid questions like that. You're going to get yourself in trouble. You know, and don't even ask about the Chinese state run lottos, you know, because you know, da if daddy does it, it's OK. OK, so in this first story, I wasn't able to find the actual full name of this kid. I was able to find his surname. So we're just going to call him by that, which is Chang. And now he's only 14 years old. And in 2020 in Hubei, China, he was caught gambling, playing poker with two of his buddies in grade nine, which I assume is equivalent to high school freshman or something like that. So his teacher catches him and she's completely confused and shocked by this because this is just appalling to even catch these kids gambling in a school environment, right? As frowned upon as gambling is in China. So she calls up all their parents, okay, because she doesn't know what to do. And she asks them to come on down and have a meeting so that they could discuss what kind of discipline would be appropriate for, you know, this offense. And when Chang's mother shows up, okay, we have footage of this. I don't know how much of this I can show, so I'm going to chop it up a bit for you guys. But you guys will be able to see, you know, what's happening here. So she, Chang's mother, makes a beeline straight to Chang and just wallops him straight off the bat. Okay, now the video is a bit grainy. But it's safe to assume that she is also berating the hell out of him, okay? For good measure, she just wallops him again with another slap, okay? So whatever response she was getting from Chang was clearly unsatisfactory because she does this move, okay? Mm. She grabs him by the throat and pushes him against uh, the pillar that he was standing in front of right up against it. And this probably shocked a lot of people that were watching his peers you know, staff and teachers and stuff like that. So a woman shows up. And I'm just going to assume that she's staff. OK, she goes and tries to calm down the mother. OK, now, not before the mother gets in another good shove to the head, which causes uh, Chang to stumble away a bit, you know, so it's a pretty dire situation. And, you know, the mother could have handled it a little bit more calmly. OK, now, once the woman was there, you know, it's, Things seem to de-escalate a bit. And then a man shows up on the screen, okay, on the bottom of the screen you can see here. And he just points, okay, points away, you know, making sure that the woman, the staff member, takes this mother out of here because she's obviously lost it with her kid, okay. So now we have Chang as the mother is being escorted away, standing all by himself. He's kind of, you know, kind of, his body language alone just lets you know that he is defeated, you know, what just happened is probably, it's a 14 year old kid, okay? Things like this is basically the worst thing that's ever happened to him. Here is where things get dire, okay? Suddenly Chang, after three minutes of just standing there, you know, just thinking, who knows what goes on in a 14 year old's head, but it must have been very dark because in an instant, he jumps onto the railing OK, the other kids notice what he's doing. They start to make a move towards him, but it was just way too late. He jumped, OK, five stories to his death. The aftermath of all this in China, they said that the mother is being investigated, you know, for her behavior, but also that she is completely devastated by the loss of her son and she feels absolute guilt as she probably should. Right. But you got to think of this, too. If she's willing to do this in public to her son in front of 
in the most embarrassing way in front of his school mates and stuff like that, then what, what was she doing in private? And I'll give you the last food for thought about this story. This takes place in China. Now, we all know that China is amazing at filtering their news, right? So for them to allow this news to hit, you know, a public forum, you know that this is some type of news that they want people to see. So I can only assume that they really feel the parenting in China is very insufficient. And this is a prime proof of that. So I don't know. Pretty sad story. So we're going to go back to 2015 for this next story. In Tacoma, Washington, when a father catches his 13-year-old daughter. Her name is Isabella Laxamana. People just know her by Izzy, so that's what we're going to call her. Okay, so Izzy was sending photos to a boy on social media. Now, she wasn't sending nude photos, but she was sending rather suggestive ones, you know, like wearing stockings or something like that. Okay, you get the idea. But it completely angered her father because he's warned her twice before not to use social media in this manner. And that came with a warning, okay, that he decided to carry out that he was going to cut all her black, beautiful hair off, okay? Uh, like, that would be a sufficient warning for most teenage girls, right? That, that's something that they really pride themselves in, and they don't want to look stupid in school. No teenager does. But it didn't work, because she, obviously she did it again, so he had to carry it out, he felt, okay? Not only did he cut off all her hair, he recorded it. Okay, now it was just the aftermath of the haircut with the hair just piled up on a table. And he would ask his daughter, man, you lost all your beautiful hair. Was it worth it? And you could hear her quietly, mousily answer, no. And unfortunately, that video was uploaded to YouTube. And worse, it went viral. Millions and millions of views, four million, it's been reported. And you know what, her school saw it, you know, and they probably let her know about it. Because two short days after, on May 29th, Izzy was riding in a car with her grandparents over a freeway overpass where she just opened the door, leapt out of a moving vehicle, ran to the railing, and somehow managed to get herself over the fence and drop herself into freeway traffic. Effectively, ending it all, ending the pain. Now, when the internet receives a story like this, okay, there's a knee-jerk reaction, okay? There's not many facts yet, but there was an outcry that the dad should be brought in and prosecuted for public shaming his daughter to death. Now, the police had to come out, okay? They had to quell the mob and they had to, you know, issue out a few facts, you know? And the, the main fact was, the dad didn't even upload that video to YouTube. It wasn't him. That video mainly was recorded to remind Izzy of what could happen if she didn't listen to her parents. Okay, they were just trying to protect her, you know, from the internet. You know, she was sending out these, you know, suggestive photos. And who knows what kind of online predators are out there waiting for her, right? So they were doing the right thing, but, you know, they could have did it in a different manner or whatnot. But that's not to be discussed here. To be discussed here is the fact that Izzy had her own issues. She was growing more and more worried, according to her friends, that those pictures that she was sending out would come back to haunt her for the rest of her life, okay? She's a teenager, 13 years old. Everything is the end of the world, okay, when they make mistakes, okay, without someone to, you know, be there to, to talk them off the ledge every time. That was for one, and another was that she didn't make student body government, okay? Some type of position she wanted. She was very disappointed about that. The video did not help. I will have to say that, okay? But she did leave behind a message for her father in her tablet saying that she didn't want him to blame himself and that she loved him so much that he was a good dad. Putting yourself in his position, there is no way you don't blame yourself. So there was, to pile on, you know, a, a grieving father who feels guilt, guilt for that too, you know, it's kind of, um, no, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do that. You know, I hope he's doing well now because it is an unfortunate situation. And it was Izzy that was sending that video around. 
it was, you know, we, we've come to learn. She was sending it and showing it to her friends. And, you know, those friends probably sent it to another friend. And somewhere along the line, someone decided it was a good idea to upload it to the Internet. And that's where all this chaos happened. She was also getting bullied in school, you know. So, fuck those guys, okay? They should take all the blame for this, I feel. You know, a beautiful young girl, 13 years old, very impressionable, very lovely. Why would you bully her? Now, before we get into the final story, if you guys are enjoying yourself, I want to remind you guys to hit that like button because it will help share this video with a lot more people. And none of my videos thus far that I've made have cracked 100 likes. 94, I think, is the most I've gotten on the Barry Morphew video. So if you guys can hit that like button, get me to over 100, then you know what? I will feel good and uh, this video might do better. <laughs> Anyways, guys, on to the final story. Now, the last story that I'm going to tell you guys is a heartbreaking one, and I have to warn you guys, it's as sad as they come, okay? It happened in 2012 in Staten Island, New York, and this is the story of Felicia Garcia. Now, to say 15-year-old Felicia's life was never easy would be an understatement, because at the young age of seven, her father passes away. Now, just a short year after that, her mother passes away. In an interview with her biological grandmother, there, it was never disclosed why the parents died. And uh, we're just going to respect that. And we're just going to leave it at that. So here we go. Felicia is now put into the custody of her aunt. Now, her aunt has kids of her own and a full-time job. And she wasn't able to be, you know, the caretaker that she wanted to be. And from most accounts, Felicia was miserable because she wound up running away after six months, which would land her into foster care. And now she would be bounced around from foster home to foster home. And for a kid that young, you know, still coping with the fact that she lost both her parents, you know, the pain and the confusion of it all, you know, must have been, we can imagine, very tough, right? So there would be a light at the end of the tunnel because she would eventually receive a foster mother that really cared about her. She was a blessing, according to her biological grandmother. Uh, this lady really stabilized Felicia's life. And you know what? She started to have dreams and she started to be positive about the future. Okay, this is what this lady was doing for her. So upon entering high school, Felicia brought these dreams with her. The grandmother would state that she was smart, she was beautiful, she was talented, and she had so many dreams. And one of those dreams now was to become an artist because she discovered that she had a love and a talent for art and she was already thinking about the universities. Now, think about a 15-year-old girl in 2012. The only thing they're thinking about is marrying Justin Bieber at the time, right? But this girl was thinking about college. I wasn't thinking about college at 14, 15. No way, but this girl was. So you know that she had the right path. She had the right mind frame to achieve those goals. And then someone started a rumor. <sighs> and it was a vile one at that. Okay. The rumor was that she slept with four different football players at a party. Now, the football players would take to Twitter and tweet, don't believe everything you hear. You know, to try to squash the rumor before it got rolling but it was already rolling it grew some legs and a few of her classmates already started to poke fun at her you know and then a few more and then a few more would pile on and it would escalate to what they would call slut shaming but i want to know this if they knew how hard a life how hard an upbringing she had losing both parents foster care the whole nine if they knew that would they still bully her would they still bully her if they knew about her declining mental health, her depression, and all the medications she was taking for it? Would you still bully her? Now, the bullies today, they know who they are. They're still alive, right? Would you still bully her knowing all that? And how do you live with yourself knowing that you were part of it? But anyways, <laughs> I'm just getting off topic here. So... The bullying would get bad, and it only got worse. The taunting in the hallways, it went from school bullying to cyberbullying, 
and even those football players, the same ones that were trying to squash the rumors in the beginning, they were now rolling with the narrative as well. She told me how a few football players were tormenting her. What were they saying to her? They were just making fun of her, like inappropriate things. So basically, that newfound positive outlook on life that Felicia had now was effectively being stripped away. And her friends saw it. They just didn't know what to do about it. Now, one friend would say, you know, Felicia, after being through everything that she's been through in life, had very thick skin. And she knew that something was terribly wrong when she saw Felicia crying at school. And her Facebook posts would be getting more morbid and morbid. Every update was something dark. And her friends, all they could do was watch because they weren't equipped to deal with something like this. They didn't know how. And they just watched their friend, you know, fall into a very dark space. On October 22nd, at about 8, 10 p.m., Felicia decided to tweet. And it was just two short days later on the 24th that she'd be standing at the Staten Island Railway waiting for a train alongside fellow classmates, alongside other people. And uh, she was reported to be very anxious, okay? She's looking disheveled, hair all in her face, and she was asking people when the train was arrived, when was it about to be due? And when the train finally did arrive, she dropped her bags, she handed her phone to a friend, and she probably let out a sigh and said, finally, it's here. And she ran and jumped in front of the train into the shock and the horror of the onlookers and was struck and died. Now, it was also reported that there could be heard students in the crowd just before the train arrived taunting her to the very end. Now, I'm just going to let you know that no charges were ever pressed in this case. Hmm. You know, and honestly, I don't know how a 13-year-old me would react in any of those situations because that's tough. That's tough for anybody. You know, there were so many underlying, you know, things, you know, sometimes just hugging someone and consoling them isn't enough, you know, in the case of Izzy and uh, Felicia. But as for Chang, you know, I, I, I somewhat imagine, you know, after slapping Chang, you know, the mother, what if the mother said, I'm sorry, because, you know, gambling can ruin lives and I love you too much to let you ruin your life. So don't do it again. Gave him a hug and walked away. For some reason, I think that might have changed the situation for that one. But for Izzy and Felicia, it's a bit more complicated. Okay. But after having said all that, okay, let's just try to end things on a positive note. Okay, so if you're the parent of the greatest teenager in the world, go ahead and give that teen another hug and a kiss and an I love you again and again and um, send them on their merry way. But if you're the parent of a troubled teen that's always getting into some type of problem, give that teen a hug too. Tell them that you love them because I can't imagine how it would hurt to let that teen know that they're wanted and loved. So if you guys enjoyed these tales, then I know you guys will enjoy my next video, which I'm going to talk about people that played video games for so long that it was actually game over for them in real life. So subscribe if you want to catch that video and don't forget to hit the thumbs up guys. But if you have a naked baby or know a naked baby, visit happyedition.com. That's me and my wife's little baby onesie shop and toddlers and uh, we're having a holiday sale right now so go ahead and check that out anything you buy would support the channel directly so i am the left-handed monkey you know protect the ones you love and don't forget to love the ones that protect you you know stay safe until we can see each other again here on monkey tales <laughs>